Hi, I'm Michael Ullmann. I'm leading McKinsey's European Insurance Risk Management Practice. I'm here in Amsterdam at the Risk Minds Insurance Conference of 2013. And I'm very glad that next to me is Dr. Aluvalia. He is the head of finance risk management of Swiss Re. Not very many people understand the term financial risk management. It's a little different from some other companies. What it, what it means is that my team oversees the active risk taking of Swiss Re Group that is not actuarial or insurance based. So that includes the asset management activities, but also the active credit risk taking through insurance lines such as credit insurity or the credit risk that comes from our treasury operations. Uh, Dr. Aluvalia gave a lecture today on stress testing. And uh, I would like to know, what does four, 4 plus 1 stress testing mean? Inside my team, we've worked quite hard to try and organize our thoughts about stress testing because we found that uh, some time ago, we would have newcomers to the group that would undertake stress testing in a very haphazard fashion where the results didn't have much impact. So 4 plus 1 was a technique to segregate the different types of stress testing we want to see done in the group and to clarify what the objective is of each type of stress testing. So the plus one is the normal usage of the term. It's an enterprise risk management activity which checks that our business plan is within uh, our risk tolerance and within the capabilities of our capital position. So it's a test to ensure we have enough, enough capital. The other four categories allow us to think about stress tests that can be done by risk managers throughout the organization in their day-to-day -day activities and their dialogue with business managers. And we have four categories which uh, go from something called risk ranking, which is a, a new vocabulary around uh, a familiar concept such as uh, is often referred to as heat maps. But we'll, we have a particular terminology called risk ranking, which is a little bit more dynamic than the production of a heat map. We also have a category which is looking at historic events. Our third category is quite con conventional, which is about ad hoc scenarios. And then the fourth is reverse stress tests, where we will reverse into uh, a particular loss figure, uh, trying to uh, articulate a method by which such a loss figure mm -hmm. could be uh, realized. So it sounds like uh, 4 plus 1 is the state of the art of stress testing within Swiss Re nowadays. What is different if you compare that to five years ago? One of the prime differences was the uh, activity around risk ranking. So as I commented, the concept of a heat map is, is quite conventional and you'll sometimes see them published in the Wall Street Journal or in other newspapers. Taking a collection of positions and, and ranking them for risk or creating a, a heat map has been done for many, many years. But when we describe risk ranking in the perspective of stress testing, we're expecting them, our risk managers to take the results and discuss them and sometimes challenge the business managers with the uh, output that we have. So we will apply customized scenarios to a collection of positions. And those, that collection may not be throughout the group, but it may be a, a local set of positions that are managed by a particular business manager in Swiss Re. And we found that we get more constructive dialogue with the business manager either agreeing with the output of risk or challenging us, but if a business manager disagrees, they change the ranking. And that causes a, a very constructive debate to take place. I guess that even within Swiss Re, not everybody has a statistical, mathematical or actuarial background. What do you do that all the other people understand the outcome of your stress testing models? Our stress testing is very much designed to uh, be understandable and to have um, an impact in the company, which may be an impact of reassurance or may help business managers or senior managers think about the risk profile and how we will uh, address some of the tail risks. So the output of our stress testing regime is normally structured in a fashion that is digestible by senior managers. Uh, and uh, I don't mean to be insulting, but that obviously it, it means that it has to be pretty understandable. And we'll often refer to simple metrics, whether it's uh, a loss type uh, magnitude, or it's uh, some sort of uh, thermometer type 
output which will show a sort of green, amber, red ranking of the, uh, of the conclusions that we're drawing. I think the banking industry experienced the situation that they have just forgotten in the past about a risk which has significantly materialized that was liquidity risk. So are you sure that in insurance you already know about all kind of risks which therefore you then should stress test? Liquidity risk came to the forefront for everybody's mind in the financial crisis. We've been fortunate that the activities of our treasury function have been thinking about liquidity risk for many years and we work collaboratively with finance to put in place a customized liquidity test and also a flight to quality test which we run regularly to see whether our liquidity position could meet the needs under a variety of different uh, uh, difficult scenarios. Okay. So at least I have the impression that you are not very much stressed by doing stress testing. Thank you very much for this talk. Thank you very much for inviting me.